In 1976, Sylvester Stallone made his major film debut with Rocky, the Academy Award-winning film and character that made Sly a bona fide movie star. Five sequels and two spin-off hits later, Stallone's bum from Philly has himself a legitimate franchise and possibly even a cinematic universe. What makes the Rocky films stand out is that they are way more than just boxing movies. Below the surface of training montages, fighting, sweat, and mumble yelling, you'll find depth, true-to-life characterization, brilliant acting, masterful cinema work, and most of all, heart. But one film in the franchise is often overlooked or even dismissed. But this past week, I decided to give it a watch. I sat down and gave it the shot it deserved and just judge it on its own merits as a standalone film. And you know what? It's good. And I don't mean it's good for a Rocky movie. It's legitimately good. It, it held up on its own. So in this video, I want to go over why and how Rocky V became the black sheep of the franchise. And I'll detail out exactly why I think Rocky V is worth a second look. But in order to do that, I'm gonna need some help from a couple of my friends. I'm gonna invite Matt and Steven Webster from the Radcast podcast onto this episode. And in fact, we're going to do an extended conversation of this episode for their podcast. And so if you're interested in checking that out, you can click on this link right now. Oh, that's them right now? Actually, just, just wait right here. I'm gonna go answer the door. Uh, all right, sorry about that. Oh, and I uh, changed my shirt. Anyway, like I was saying, Rocky V completely lives up to the standards of the rest of the Rocky movies and fully belongs in this franchise. So, I'm Dan Drake. I'm Matt Webster. And I'm Steven Webster. And this is why Rocky V is great. All right, so before we fully jump into Rocky V, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, Matt, Steven, yeah. thank you so much for, for joining us on Why It's Great. Yeah, it's of great course. to have you. I like yeah. it when you touch my leg. But anyway, uh, back to Rocky V. Throughout the whole series, Rocky is fighting hard to be respected and to pull himself out of the slums. But now in Rocky V, Rocky is dealing with having to be back where he never wanted to be again, feeling like all his work was for nothing, like he has to start all over. Uh, this neighbor is coming down with tooth decay. John Alvidson, the director of the first Rocky film, returns to the director's chair for five, which brings something back to the series that was missing from three and four. In fact, he instructed a cinematographer to use the least amount of lighting as possible to give the film a more raw, gritty, dingy look, very much like the first one. And it makes that final fight much more visceral. And the music of Bill Conti is a return to form for the series. And that grounded human element really just shies away from the superhuman feeling of Rocky IV. The film can also be seen as autobiographical. When you look at three and four, it sort of mirrors Sylvester Stallone's rise in popularity. But by the time five came out, his career was on a significant decline. It certainly wasn't as hard of a fall as Rocky, but you can definitely draw the parallels. Sly wanted to ask the question, what happens when someone whose identity is in his legacy all of a sudden loses it all? This added a layer of complexity to a movie that already has more depth than people give it credit for. It harkens back to Rocky's desire in the first movie to go the distance. At this point, Rocky has already accomplished so much. He went the distance with Apollo Creed in Rocky, gaining respect. Then, in the second one, he fought to become champ, winning it all against Apollo Creed for the second time, gaining notoriety. In the third movie, he fought to reclaim pride in himself, gaining a new sense of confidence. And in four, he fought for a friend, gaining him peace. Now, the movie has its flaws. Now, it hasn't aged well. It's still got an 80s aesthetic attached to it, even though it was made 90. There's some lip syncing issues at the beginning. Hey, dude, where's the kid? Burt Young's Polly is sort of a phoned in performance. But beyond those minor cosmetic issues, this film 
does what 80% of major film studios can't do, and that's achieve depth. It uses the events and the plot symbolically to communicate an enduring truth. Because fear is like this fire, all right? And it's burning deep inside. Now, if you control it, Tommy, it's going to make you hot. But you see, if this thing here, it controls you, it's going to burn you and everything else around you up. That's absolutely right. This film is about ambition versus contentment controlling the fire of fear, and about battling your own ego. This film also has some stellar performances from its main cast. Sylvester Stallone continues to be endlessly charming and kind-hearted as Rocky. He is so incredibly likable and inspirational. Talia Shire plays a strong, grounded Adrian, still providing a good foundation for Rocky. Adrian's speeches to help Rocky channel his heart and determination are the bedrock of Rocky's sanity and the cornerstone of each movie. Rocky V is no different. Adrian shows up in the movie right when Rocky needs it. Richard Gant plays corrupt boxing promoter George Washington Duke and is a welcome addition to the series. Gant chews up the scenery whenever he is on screen and perfectly encapsulates the shady nature of his obvious analog, Don King. And who could forget Burgess Meredith returning as Mickey in the form of memories and inspirational visions to Rocky. He shows up to inspire Rocky to become a trainer at the beginning of the film, and towards the end he shows up again when Rocky is all but defeated in the final fight. The film also sports some epic scenes, so here's my top five favorite scenes. Number five, there's this scene of Rocky asking the father for a blessing. Lovely, Number four, a fun scene with Rocky and his son where Rocky finds a particular drawing of a French teacher. I wouldn't show this to your mother because she, she, she don't understand French too good. Number three, that moment where Rocky decides he's going to fight Tommy Gunn. It's some of the most brilliant acting I've seen where you can see he goes from I'm better than this to it's going down. Number two, this famous scene of Rocky and Adrian fighters you beat you beat them with heart i know tommy makes you feel great but you're losing us rocky you're losing your family rocky and adrian are the core of this film but there's one more relationship that i think holds the top spot and that's rocky and mickey you get to hear these words of Mickey just pouring affirmation after affirmation on Rocky and giving him the golden gloves from Rocky Marciano. It is a beautiful, touching scene that chokes me up every time. Mickey loves you. When Rocky V came out in 1990, I would say that people were suffering from Rocky fatigue. From 76 to this point, we've had four other Rocky movies. Plus, since 76, Sylvester Stallone had become a huge movie star, so the market was saturated with them. Now, this was marketed as the end of the Rocky saga, so I think the expectation was an epic conclusion, sort of like we've seen in Rocky IV or Rocky III. So when this layered character study came out, people were pretty disappointed. But, you know, I would actually argue that the movie did give an epic yeah. final fight and a conclusion just not in the way that the audience expected. The final fight really illustrates Rocky putting an end to that drive to put fighting above his family to have that ultimate happiness. I mean, the point is made several times throughout the movie that Rocky grew up as a street fighter. And that final fight really puts to rest two beasts that were living inside of him, his selfishness and his fear of failure. And him defeating Tommy Gunn, who was seen as this mini Rocky, is symbolic of him defeating the negative side of his ego. Right, instead of an epic external battle like we've yeah. seen in every other yeah. Rocky movie, yeah. we get an epic internal battle, a glimpse into the character of Rocky as who he is, and I really believe punching Tommy out in the street is a metaphor for the journey that all of us are faced with at some point in our lives. Finally, being able to control our fear of failure to be able to accept ourselves and our lives for what they are, and to find contentment in all the riches of what we already have. Come on, Dad, you can do better than that. Look at this thing, kid. As long as this thing is here, 
Pigeons is always gonna have a place to sit, right? Thanks, Dad. Uh, yeah, you deserve it. Thank you for being born. Thank you. Thank you. Look at this, you know. I've been running up and down these steps for 20 years, and I never knew there was valuable pictures in this building, you know? Well, you're never too old to learn something new. Yeah. You're going to love Picasso. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I love almost everybody. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Why It's Great exists to bring positivity to the internet. And so if you believe in our mission, please consider subscribing. And don't forget that if you want to check out the extended conversation around Rocky Five for the Radcast podcast, you can click this link or the link in the description right now. You'll be able to watch the video of the conversation or listen to the audio in your favorite podcast player. I also want to give a special shout out to uh, my patrons on Patreon. Uh, I could not do this without you and I am so thankful for your support. I also want to say a huge thank you to Matt and Steven. It's a huge treat for me to have you guys here so thank you very much. I love you guys. Love you too pal. And Dan if I may before you kind of round out your episode here but I'm wearing a shirt representing another podcast that we are part of called the Proper Gentleman Podcast which you can find wherever you get your podcast fix. It's us and three of our best friends we've grown up with just talking about nerdy things nostalgia things pop culture things all sorts of things that you can find and uh, probably get enjoyment out of at least some of them so the proper gentleman podcast we release on fridays and you can find us wherever you get your podcast fix yep and i'll put a link in the description for that as well it's hilarious i, I love listening to that well that's it for why it's great thanks again for watching remember you are worthy of love and the world is better because you're in it we'll see you next time